Hey, Brock, how you doing? What's up, Michael? How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing great. Uh, thanks for asking. So this is uh, December 21st, and, um, you know, uh, we've had a couple of um, uh, meetings and uh, conferences so forth. And I just wanted to um, pick your brain on what the market's, you know, finishing up at and where we're going in 2024. For those of you who don't know you in our audience, uh, this is uh, Brock uh, Zeron out of uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, he's a life coach, um, realtor coach, and a high producing agent um, in the Charlotte area. So if um, you need an agent in the Charlotte area, he's the man. Um, we'll post your information at the tail end of this so too, Brock. So thank you for joining us and sharing some of your wisdom um, and data um, as we uh, navigate this shifting market. Yeah, well, I appreciate you having me on here. And, you know, it, it, is, it is a popular question, just like, you know, New Year's resolutions, it, it happens to be it's 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 the new year and everybody wants to know what's upcoming and what's the forecast looking like. Um, and we study a lot of data. We go through Fannie Mae, we go to Golden Sachs, we look at Zillow, we look at Redfin, Reeler.com. We look at all these indicating factors to be able to puzzle piece some things. And some of our major ingredients that, we're, that we look at, we look at the feds on what they do, the FOMC with Powell and how he... He he has a huge indicator on where we go using inflation and and uh, our market is part of one of the inflation factors. It's part of what we call shelter, mm -hmm. and that really plays a huge effect in our rates and what we're seeing. And so we use all these ingredients to for me to help agents and to coach them and to help your clients being able to get a better idea. Because what we've learned is the more knowledge that they have, they can make more sound, educated, comforting decisions. I want to look at because it's been there's been a lot of versatility going in or leaving 2023, 2022. We're, we're now out of the COVID era and, and that sort of thing. But we're seeing some different things take place. And so I appreciate the opportunity to be able to share this with you and your audience. And hopefully they're able to get a better understanding so they can make some decisions in their real estate in 2024. Absolutely. And even though I'm in Europe, Charlotte, there's some parallels to our markets and also what we're, we're navigating through this going coming into uh, 2024. Um, so let's let's uh, just jump into it. What do you what um, I know you have uh, uh, some graphs and charts that, that we want to discuss. Sure. So the first thing that really is the big, biggest challenge that our country faces, as you can see, and can you see my screen? All right. Yes, I can see it. Thank you. So <clears throat> this you know, we, we hear lack of inventory, right? We hear interest rates, we hear inflation, we hear all these things, but one of the, really the biggest, biggest challenge, and we'll just go right into the meat and potatoes, is the affordability of people being able to purchase homes because home values have skyrocketed. I'm sure for those of you on here that if you want a market report or home report card of your home value, Michael and his team can do this, is... You could see where if you own this house five years ago it is a night and day difference. The average Absolutely. person right now by NAR states that the average person has over two hundred thousand dollars in equity in their home. It's crazy. And the biggest thing from 07 to 08 is nobody had any equity. And that is why we're not facing a housing recession is because there's so much money in people's walls. So the biggest problem that you see here and I and I hate to hate to show this to you, Michael, but um you can't even see your state of Florida, can you? No, you can't. And and that's because Florida, if you look up here, the affordability index under a hundred is less affordable than the historic average. And unfortunately, your state has really, really changed in meaning with your affordability. The other challenge you have is your insurances. I hear a lot of agents struggling with the insurance. You got home insurance, you got hurricane insurance, you got flood insurance, and they are like people's monthly bills, monthly living just to be able to have a house is becoming astronomical. So share with me when you look at this. So it's always about like, here's the problem. But what I love about working with you and your team is you guys have solutions to be able to help clients, to be able to help them. Like, how do I overcome this or at least educate them on some things that you're doing and you're seeing in, in, in the Florida area? What, what does that look like, you know, to you, Michael? Well, first of all, um, you know, thanks for sharing that, sharing that. And yes, everything you stated is 100 percent correct. And in my perception, you know, there's there's 
a couple of factors though too. If we're working with the client and trying to guide them, sometimes selling right now is not going to be the best opportunity because you know if they have a lot of equity and an interest rate of three percent, it might not always be the best time to sell. Mm -hmm. Um, and I understand that because of the, you know, to take the equity and then go put it in another house, the, the rate might double if they, but if they can afford it, that's okay. If they can't afford it, uh, you gotta be careful. But here in, in the Naples area at Fort Myers area, 50% of our owners are absentee owners with mm. keeping in mind that they, um, these buyers are second home or vacation home. And they're also, um, uh, you know, people that are retiring. So they're paying 70% of our business is cash. Now, with that being uh, noted, 70% of the cash, they're still not going to pull the trigger until they feel value. Mm. Whether it be affordable or not, they do see the shift in the market. And, the, you know, they do believe that some sellers are pricing houses and are a little bit unrealistic. Just like we looked at the MLS data a little bit ago, where um, new listings are coming on the market in our area and they're on par with price adjustments on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And the close, the close transactions are still under what's coming on. So inventory is increasing. Keep in you know, now for, for families that, you know, first time home buyers or for affordability for the, you know, the working class, it's tough. It really, really is. So we had some conversations with you and some mortgage people where they're being creative now going forward. Now, I've not heard of the programs or seen them yet, but offering 40, 50, maybe 60 year mortgages. Yeah. And we are... what does that gonna, what could do for a country in lever leveraging, you know, you know, they're like constant renters, aren't they? Yeah. Well, that that was one of the things Grant Cardone actually had something on it. He he says we could it, it could be very doable to see 100 year mortgages at some point and. And we would just become a renting country because you never would really have true ownership from the normal, um, you know, society for the working class, like you stated. Now, a question that I would I would present to your clients as well as for those listening in, something that you should be asking is <clears throat> we could see a lot of this in 2024 is asking if the loan is assumable. Mm -hmm. So that way they can take on a lower interest rate that some of these people had the three, four percenters at that time period when they were getting their home. So that way that can help some of this affordability for your clients to be able to make some of these purchases until we see something change with the mortgage industry um, that we have there. So assumable loans are, be, are we, we forecasting to become more popular coming into 2024. Fair to say? Fair to say, and that's a great, I mean, that's a great thing, a question to ask because, and, and I'm not trying to, I've been in this business for 20 years. You've been in close to uh, 15, 20 years. My point is, is some agents are not equipped with asking these types of questions and yeah. knowing that and yeah. guiding their clientele. That's really the biggest thing is just asking more and more questions, even as a buyer or seller listening in, asking more questions to say like, what other options, what else can we do? Have you, you know, what else is out there? Because there are so many different challenges, but I'm going to pivot here and, and change course because here's something that is, that is very important that I want to share with you <clears throat> for those buyers is Redfin. Um, one of our indicating uh, data tools that we use is you can see your home prices rose 0.6 from a month earlier, the smallest increase since June. As this for homes, for I mean, for buyers here, what does it does? It gives buyers more options. Absolutely. Michael, how many times have you been hearing, well, there's no homes out there. I can't sell because there's no homes. I can't sell because I got nothing. There's nothing else out there, right? How many times do we hear that? All right. Well, but you know what? This just gets back to what we spoke about this morning on um, our group call where uh, back in 2015, how many listings were on the market across the country? Yeah, I know. We were we were just talking about that. So in 2015, there was a little bit over a million homes in the the National Association of Realtors said that there was like one point, like one, a little bit, a little bit less than that of homes on the market. And today we have about a half a million or five hundred thousand. Yeah. So yeah. the supply and demand issue still comes into play, but 
being able to navigate, be creative, whether it be financing or even uh, helping our seller sell position properly in the market to get it sold. Yeah, one hundred percent on that. Where, you know, that is one of the indicators to be able to help buyers. Another line that that you know buyers out there looking, I would be asking now. Michael and his team, they have these, but we're expecting the expired market, the homes that were withdrawn, terminated, that didn't sell a little bit, like as COVID was ending. Okay, so the homes that from 2020 to 2021 there's projected to come into the market this year and we're going to see a rise let me let me show you this screen here um if you don't mind i'm gonna show this to you here this was um this is a chart that we use where we where we looked at the forecast can you see this all right yes this is good so this is the existing home sales. And I mean, take a look at this, this, the ski slope right here. This is a great sled riding uh, right here. And then we thought we were doing good. And then we took another turn. And this is just indicating, you know, where we were. I mean, 2020, 2020, that was like two years ago. Two years ago, we were, we were flirting with over 6,500, okay, of existing home sales. And now when we look at this, the prior forecast, you can see this number, this dotted line is below what now the new current forecast is. And to be honest with you all, the reason why this suddenly shifted was because the FOMC, Powell says he's not planning on making any more interest rates hikes. And I'll have a chart for you in a minute here to share this with you. But this is, this is important stuff all because now there's going to be some more homes coming on the market and we're seeing it coming from 2020, 2021. And so we're teaching a lot of our agents to call expireds. But here's the thing when your clients and what I was saying with your team, Michael, is you guys have this data. Hey, mm -hmm. you'd be interested in seeing some homes that are not on the MLS right now that are not on online. Would you like seeing some more off market list? Would you like us to see some, some pocket potential listings? These things that buyers might be like, Whoa, yeah, I want to see that. I mean, we have access to all that. Um, and you know, and the people that take it off the market for a year or two are very receptive to showing the properties. Are you doing an ad for Pepsi or something? What's that? Are you doing an ad for commercial for Pepsi? Uh, yeah. yes, I gotta, they, you know, they <laughs> little endorsement, <laughs> they, they, they pay me, uh, they pay me nothing. They, that's what they pay me, nothing. I pay them. <laughs> Um, but, but the, the, the key thing that I wanted to, sh to share with you in reference to, now I lost my train. I got I'm all sorry. excited about the Pepsi. Oh, uh, we were talking about the, the, uh, off, off market listings. Oh, yeah. and here's the thing. The excitement of the 2020, 2021, when, as you're talking to these potential sellers or these people that might be kicking the tires or, or these opportunities all here's the good news. For those sellers that are listening into this, you need to call Michael and his team right away and find out what the inflation has been in the last two or three years. Because mm -hmm. you're like here in Charlotte, we've seen an 8% year over year. So those people are waiting, not too sure. Hey, now's an opportunity. You might have had an extra 16 to 24% growth since 2020. So look at that equity and see what your opportunities are so you can take advantage of that. When you hit the nail on the head, it's the assumable loans is going to be very helpful to a lot of people, a lot. And that's, I think that's going to help you and help raise the price values for some of the sellers um, when they, you know, when you be, be this creative. Yep. Um, but in going, you know, your chart that you just showed, if you look back at the chart real briefly, 2021 20, and 22 were anomalies, obviously because of COVID, you know, especially here in Florida, people came down here because they could educate from here. Politics pushed them down here. Um, People want to work from home in, in a sunshine state. But with, with your chart, you're looking at it 24 and 25. It's uh, trending up to back to a normal market. And yeah. we're going to continue to see that as, as, as we're in an election year coming up. And not to mention the um, the interest rates will be pulling back as predicted, uh, at least three drops. So hopefully um, we'll see that. And I do believe we'll see some, um, them to continue to um, slide, slide downward. Well, 
we'll we'll uh, conclude with the interest rate because it's a positive note and everything has been positive. It's been it's been a lot better than the initial projections. And here's another forecast for you that we are, as you see, the prior forecast. I mean, this dotted line here <laughs> was still going up mm -hmm. because we thought we were going to see a rate hike in December. And then <clears throat> as we get into 2024, we thought we'd be a little bit of a, a, you know, still in the low sevens, maybe sixes. But man, we've seen a drastic change. We've seen some excitement with the numbers, and this is all across the country. So some of those people that want to pay cash down here, you know, they have to sell their house because you said a lot of them are absentee owners. Mm -hmm. They got to sell their houses in different parts of the country where they're seeing this more of. And this is going to help them sell their house because these buyers are going to start to take a look at it. And so there's going to be some opportunities. So for those buyers out there in your area, I'm telling you, you might want to, you know, have a conversation with Michael and his team sooner. So that way you can be educated to say like, cause remember back in the day, this is sounds kind of crazy. Remember when we had like multiple offers all the time? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's, that possibly could take place when these rates go down and homes are coming back on the market. You want to get ahead of it. And so that's mm -hmm. what we're teaching and coaching a lot of our agents, your clients is you want to stay ahead of it so you don't have to go through this this fighting and, and everything else. And and the rates, they look good. And the 10-year yield is a really good thing to look at for those that go on the computer. Google 10-year yield. And that number correlates to where the rates are. And right now we're below 4%, mm -hmm. which means why we're seeing the interest rates in the low sixes um, already. So overall, the real estate market health is definitely getting better. It's kind of like when you go to the doctors and you take the medicine and it, it takes a while for it to kick in. Yeah, yeah. We're at that kick in point here that it's, it's starting to get better and we can see the medicine working and we just got to continue taking our medicine and continue to educate your clients. Those, those that are listening, those that listen to your market, get your market review, your market reports. This is a really good opportunity for them to understand and, and to pick your brain and ask you the questions. Cause you guys have a lot of the answers. Well, thank you. And I'll leave it with this, though. How many times have we said you you marry the house? You're in the house. You don't marry the rate. The, the rate can be changed as it continues to go down. And, you know, we want to put you in your first choice of the house and then adjust the rate as, as time goes on. Hmm. So I'm, I'm also I don't want to say I'm a victim of the market, but I mean, I, um, you know, we have a brand new house that we put uh, five, three quarters um, interest rate. I'm happy that I can go up to eight, but at the same time, I'm still optimistic that I'll, they'll get below five sometime in the next year or two. And so mm -hmm. I'll adjust it. Yep. So yeah, I, no, I, very, I, actually, I, I, feel that, I feel what my clients are going through. I know we're running out of time, Brock, but I, I can't thank you enough for your wisdom and, and uh, you sharing and, and helping out and um, just wish you and your family the best of holidays and Merry Christmas. And um, we continue this journey together through uh, 2024. Yeah, man. Thank you very much. I, I got my festive jacket on today. I, <laughs> I can't wear this in July. People look at me a little strange. So this is, this seems to be the, the right time for me to wear this. So uh, <laughs> Merry Christmas to you, your family. And for those that are watching, happy holidays. Be safe, be healthy in 2024. I wish you all the best. If we can help you in the Charlotte area or other parts of the country, let us know. We'd be more than happy to help you. So thanks, Michael. I give me your phone number and um, website or email real quick. Please. So if anybody, you can text me or call me, area code 704-728-1008. And then my website is brokerbrockzvan.com. And I think you got show notes, but uh, it's Z-E-V-A-N is my last name, but uh, brokerbrockzvan.com. Uh, feel free to text me. And I'm on Facebook and all those good old social media sites too. You're everywhere. So if you want to reach out to me, it's Michael Burke. Uh, at kw.com or you can reach me at 239-777-0473 uh, again thank you again brock and merry christmas merry christmas buddy thank you all right, all right bye now